All right. In this video, we're going to do the second half of null and, null and column spaces, looking at how we compute a column space and proving that it has the properties that a subspace should satisfy. All right, just as we did with null spaces, our first step for computing a column space, or at least to find an efficient presentation of a column space, is to row reduce this matrix. So we could actually get our column space pretty quickly without maybe knowing all the properties we'd want by taking the span of our three column vectors. So these column vectors, um, since these are B, they're B1, B2, and B3. But we're going to actually start by row reducing this matrix just to make sure that, or to check whether or not the three of these vectors are linearly independent or not. So if we row reduce uh, B, and we find the identity matrix with a, a column of zeros, that would mean that the span of these three is, um, is three-dimensional, so we would just write out the linear combination of these three. Um, if we row reduce it and find something other than ones along this um, possible, you know, sort of diagonal, um, that means that our, our column space can actually be written as the span of two vectors of the three. While I've included in um, the attached MATLAB file a way to actually, you know, the actual MATLAB code to calculate this, just jump straight to the row reduced form of this matrix in the video. So we see since we didn't row reduce this to something with ones along the diagonal, this actually means that our first two columns are sufficient to span our space. As reading off from this directly, we can see that the third column can be written as um, one copy of our first column. So this we'll call this B1 and B2 and B3. From this third column, we can see that column B3 can be written as a sum of one copy of B1 minus two copies, or sorry, plus two copies of B2. So we can write our, spa our column space here just in terms of our first two vectors. So our span, um, our column space of B um, could either be written as the span of B1 b2, b3, if we don't want to be efficient about it, or it can be written as the span of just our first two vectors, b1 and b2. So specifically, our column space is going to be all vectors of the form, um, so we can actually just take our, our two vectors here. This will be uh, 2s minus t, so that's our first coordinate times some parameter s, Second, our first coordinate of our second column times some parameter t, um, negative s plus 2t, um, s minus 2t, and positive t. Our column space is all such vectors for any s and t inside our field. So most of the time, again, when I write, uh, say, field, I'm most of the time thinking about the real numbers or complex numbers, but relatively soon we're going to see some examples of other fields. In the same way that we could identify whether or not a matrix A was invertible by examining um, whether or not, so going back to that earlier example, if A was an n by n square matrix, um, the null space of A was equal to just the vector 0 if and only if A inverse exists. So this was our, our previous theorem. Um, in this new theorem, we see that A is invertible if and only if the dimension of the column space is n. So this is actually coming out of looking at um, what this dimension of a column space means. We still are only really just getting started in things like rank and dimension of bases. But for our, um, for our definition of column space, we say that the column space of A has dimension n if um, you know, A is a square matrix, the column space of A is equal to the span of the columns in our matrix and no subset of these AIs um, will be sufficient. span the column space. 
Um, an alternate way of phrasing this is the column space of A is, is equal to N if and only if A is row equivalent to the identity matrix, which we already know that this is one of our invertible matrix theorem conditions to say that A is invertible. All right, for our final proof of this video, let's actually show that column spaces also satisfy all the properties necessary to be subspaces of our vector space. So looking at our column space, by definition, again, we need to show two things. One, that given any W inside of our um, subspace column space, we need CW for any scalar C to also be inside W. Similarly, given any pair of vectors, w1 and w2, inside our column space, we'd like to show that the sum of these vectors is also inside our column space. So respectively, these are closure under multiplication by scalars and closure under sum of vectors. So remember, these are the two properties that define subspaces in general. So let's show that for column spaces. Now remember that um, a vector w is inside the column space of some matrix if w can be written as the sum um, a1, sorry, we should be careful, let's say c1, a1, c2, a2, and CN, AN for columns um, AI inside of our matrix. So that's our definition. Um, once we have this, note that CW is just C times our representation of W um, as that linear combination of AIs. And we can distribute that C, so C times C1 times A1 plus C times C2 times A2. So this is clearly still a linear combination since our scalars can be nicely multiplied. So this is clearly also inside the column space of A. So that proves our first property of subspaces. And for our second property, I think you can guess where this is going, um, we'll actually say for W1 and W2 inside of our column space, um, that means that we can write W1, again, I'll actually steal the exact representation we have here. So W1 can be written as some linear combination of this form. W2 can be written as some linear combination, where instead of C's, Let's say, place these with some b's, so b1, b2 through bn, and clearly our sum, I use clearly, not at all loosely here, this should be pretty, pretty nice, we can take our linear combination of both of these two pieces separately, so we still have this, um, plus our sum of our linear combination, Let's see if I can get just the the good pieces, plus our linear combination that gave us W2. Um, we can rearrange so that we write this as the sum of C1 plus B1, A1, uh, C2 plus B2 times A2, plus Cn uh, plus Bn times An. And this is clearly some linear combination of our columns, so this is also inside the column space of A. So this is enough to show that column spaces is a subspace of R to the N, or whatever, whatever vector space that we're looking at. So this was, completes our proof. In our next set of videos, we'll be defining what it means to calculate the basis for a vector space. And to date, you guys have actually already seen some examples of what are going to be bases for null spaces. 
and for column spaces, but we'll look at more general what does it mean to be a basis of a vector space or a subspace, and we're going to look at how we can use an appropriate choice of basis to aid our computation. So see you folks next time.